us to sing to you just for a moment or two because we would like to sing the tones of the joy in your heart. to think I'm part of this place. You've witnessed much and it's not completed yet because they tell me, my medium tells me, I'll be back again tomorrow. How about that? I've not been this many trips to the airplane in consecutive days in a very long time. What a grand and glorious time it is. Can you feel the beauty that's in this room? from that most beautiful song that the angels just brought forth through this beautiful lady to the sounds of the beautiful piano that's behind me to the sounds of your rhythmic heart do you not recognize love when you see it? Well, let me share a couple of thoughts with you today and then I'll turn it over to the most precious energy called Cryon. 
many years ago on this dimension did I sit with my medium and did I tell him of what it is that I would have expected of him I told him that day my friends that we had made a commitment thousands upon thousands of years ago to come to this plane of consciousness for this great shift in time and space and oh yes you can get as literal as you want I'd be the first to tell you that the past and the future are nothing more than a memory and something that cannot be because in the moment of this all time ceases to change and thereby you become this magnetic force of energy that is evolving to the emotional stability of an incarnate species life you have come to join each other on this magical walk oh i guess most of you here would go about thinking that yes you have done it before and yes sometimes you might even have had more fun but never my friends since you were last here in Lemuria over 50,000 years ago never have you had so much opportunity to know your consciousness cuz you see we can talk about the consciousness of your body we can talk about the consciousness of your soul Oh my goodness we could even talk about the consciousness of the cells that put you together but don't you know that we'd still be talking about one word consciousness that's what you are if i was to let you up come up here and ask me a question i could simply say and yes consciousness what is your question and you'd know how to respond If you came before me for a healing I could say to you yes consciousness how would I go about healing you today Because that's all you'd ever need to call each other You need only look into each other's eyes and say hello consciousness I'm consciousness and you'd be right And you say but Carol how would we ever tell each other apart Heck, if I know I can't tell you apart. You all look the same to me. Oh, you may have put on this little reflection outfits. But I think they're cute. Because you're using them to display something. You say, "Oh, Master Kyo, please don't blame this on me." Well, it is yours. And it's exactly as you want it to be. You say, "Well, could be a little bigger, a little smaller, a little thinner, a little fatter." I say, "No. It couldn't be until you want it to be something else." Cuz you see it's like this, my friends, the conscious world. I say to each of you, "Hello consciousness." And you say back to me, "Hello consciousness." And together we come to this great understanding that just maybe We came here to this earth plane in the wisdom of our creator in the love of our creator and by being a conscious awareness we've come here to heal you say but master kid what if nothing's wrong with me and i'd be the first one to tell you consciousness there's nothing wrong with you you're just playing out a consciousness isn't that beautiful do you remember oh so long ago some of you was there i know thomas was there many of you was there when the young master jesus was walking down the pathway of a small town east of bethlehem and he was walking through the town and the word had spread far and yonder that this great healer was coming before them and young martha 
young Mary Magdalene, all of the beautiful witnesses were out there in front of him when he finally entered the city streets. And as he's walking through, people were falling on their knees in front of him. Picture this with me, my friends. Consciousness falling on their knees in front of the great consciousness of light itself. And that great conscious energy called Christ poured through this man called Jesus. And the people were raised from their broken bones to the literal of those dying. And we remember this scene, my friend, because it's one I never want you to forget. Trail it along behind young Master Jesus was this little girl. Now let me tell you, this little girl, her consciousness, her back was bent. She had scars all down her face. Her bones hurt her to walk. But yet she saw Jesus and she smiled at him. And it is said that she actually winked an eye at him. And oh, Jesus and all of his love, what a consciousness he was. He knew what he wanted to do. He simply reached down and he placed his most beautiful loving hand upon her. Instantly the scars faded out of her face. Just as quickly her back and the bones straightened and all the marks of leprosy was gone. Do you remember this story? Because you know what? That little girl began to cry. And you're saying, oh, of course, Master Kill, she was crying because she'd been healed. No, she wasn't crying because she'd been healed. Let me tell you why she was crying. Young Master Jesus was immediately called out into the desert by his father. We all know who that is. That's the consciousness. And the consciousness spoke unto the consciousness and it said, Let me tell you what you have done, my son. That little girl had come to me and asked if she could be the one to help the doctors learn. She had come to me and said, What is the most devastating deformities that a little girl could possess? And we chose together the form of leprosy. And she said, good, guide me, Father, for I am like your son, Jesus. I am a great teacher, but no one will know that I'm a teacher. I will just go there and I will suffer the pain and the agony of this horrible disease. And I will have the doctors work upon me over and over again until I believe and when I believe they will believe and we will become the consciousness of belief and God looked at his son and he said my son she did not ask you for that healing it was your love and your emotion that made you believe that everybody wants to heal because they look like it. He said, my son, from here forth, remember even when people ask you for healing, you must look into your heart and open up their heart so they may heal themselves. And in that, my son, I say, healer, heal thyself. And after 40 days and 40 nights, Master Jesus returned to his walk. And from that day forward, it was always a consciousness with him that we would heal together. Why do I share this beautiful story with you? Because, my friends, of the 80 some odd people sitting in this room, 80 of you are potential 
healers. 76 of you are gifted healers. 59 of you have walked with the Master Jesus. 44 of you have served his light. And you say to me, how does that come together? It comes together because like the Master Jesus, like the Master Buddha, like the Lady Kuan Yin, like the goddesses that are walking your earth plane today, don't ya know the only way you'll ever heal anything is to fall in love with yourself. That is where the true healing will begin. Your healers, your doctors, they'll come to your aid. But it must come from within you, my friends. You must have the desire, the desire to want to make yourself the light of God again. Because that's what you are, what you know. You're not separated from your da. You are that light. So listen as I say this. I offer each of you a healing this day. If there is one energy that can heal you, it is I. If there is one energy that can take care of your finances, it is I. If there is one of you that can feel that teardrop falling down the side of your face, it is I. If there's one of you that can stop the starving of the children, the wee people, it is I. If it is one of you amongst us that can stop the war, the war between brothers and sisters, of one light, it is I. But before I can do any of those things, I must know who I is. And you know what your God Creator would say to you? You know what his young master, beautiful master son would say to you? Do you know what the preciousness of Mary Magdalene would say to you? They would say, repeat after me. I. Repeat after me. I. That's who will do it, my friends. It will be I. Not the I of someone else, but the I of selfness. The eye of your consciousness. So as not to leave you on a holy somber note this evening. You must go with me just for a minute. Close your eyes just for a moment. Just close them up nice like. Imagine if you would. Imagine you could leave your body sitting in the chair where it is. And imagine you could all form a little ball of I right down here in front of where the medium and crayon's medium are sitting. And maybe we make it the size of a good sized beach ball because you got some pretty big lights. So make it with me. Just this beautiful beach ball of light floating in the air right before, right before my medium and crayon's medium. Fill it with your love. Come on, just. Do it like this. I will my love into it. That's all you got to think. I will my love into that light, that ball. And then I'm going to ask Master Cryon to join with me in a moment of silence as we take this little ball that you've just given it to us and we take it way, way up in the etheric fabric and we press it with every bit of love that we have. that your intended eye falls over the planet Earth. Are you willing? 
just let your love build in this little ball. Cry and come with me. In a moment of silence, you will feel when we bring that ball to the height. We raise it now in honor of I. Let I always be within I. And I will. there it is we have we have sent the eye throughout and so I leave you with this thought my friends I look upon you everyone in this first row right here and I know your name I will call you conscious and I know your name for I will call you conscious and if you look at all of your brother and sister conscious, you'll know something. You'll know that you can never come apart. The Cryon Cruise, 2006. I ask you to become I, to stand forth in your own light and spread the word of love and the I conscious. Until the world knows one thing is positive. That 80 plus people who come together. Some perfect strangers to one another. And could as well become the energy of I. I welcome all of you. And like my medium said. By the powers vested upon me. In the eyes of creator. I pronounce you. Conscious and conscious. God bless and good evening. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. We're going to do something now that we have not yet done, that many of you have anticipated and said, when will it take place? This is when we're going to bring in the full power of Cryon. We have yet to call the entourage in, if some of you have noticed. They're here now. They were in the room when you walked in. Some of you felt the difference. They're going to stay here until the last of you exit and say the cruise is no more. This is the entourage who knows who you are. This is the one that builds the energy in this space and activates layer 10. This is the one that you're used to when you hear the words of cry. It's an energy that walks between the chairs and touches you, letting you know this is real. This is not something out of time and out of space. This is not something imagined. There are those here who still say, could this be real? Could a human being be actually channeling an entity from the other side of the veil? And we say again to you as many times as we have said it, that all scripture on this
entire planet, from all religions on this entire planet, were words of men and women. And the energy of the universe you call God did not write one of them. It is the way of it. And here is more. That through the veil comes this energy yet again. And we have waited till this moment and we have held off for this moment. And oh, as we have given you information in these last meetings, even a healing, we didn't have the entourage here. And now we do. What does this mean to you? I'll tell you, some of you are going to feel it before you leave this place. You've been waiting for it and it's here. There'll be some of you who will be touched this day in ways you cannot explain. Why have we waited? And I'll tell you because we wanted you to sample the mountaintop you call Kauai. We wanted the energies to be complete the samplings that you have done of the big island you call Hawaii the one you left from you call Oahu the one you visited called Maui and now the one that you sit upon called Kauai and we were not prepared to bring in the entourage until now because now the energy is complete and now you know the whole story these are mountaintop peaks of a large very large mountain in the middle of Lemuria. You might say it is the capital. I'll tell you some of the things that went on. Specifically on the mountain tops, the peaks had energies. Much like some of the peaks that you designated portals and energies to around the planet. The temples of rejuvenation, the ones that, that I have told you about in 1993 were all on the island of Hawaii. The big island of where the snow is. That's where they were. And that particular peak was dedicated to rejuvenation of DNA. And all the processes were there strong energy even then volcanic even then pouring down the side of the mountain that's where rejuvenation was you might say what did you do on Maui was it specific were there things that you did on Maui we had celebration specific ceremonies of importance on both Maui and what you now call Oahu. Healing in Lemurian days was done on the peak of what now is called Molokai. And what about Kauai? The one you sit now upon, I'll tell you. We didn't want to start that real teaching until we got here and you can feel what is here. You think it's an accident 50,000 years later that the king didn't want to fight? Think what a coincidence. This island has not seen the wars. Was it a coincidence? No. Because this is the island of love. And it completes a master picture for you. This is where the weddings occurred for Lemurians this is where we sang their names and can't you feel it you stepped upon some of the most sacred spots today for the Hawaiians for the Lemurians this mountaintop this peak even before the water so high in the sky took days to get here from the base of the mountain no machines took those here. They walked the path in joy. And when they got to the top of this place where you are, 
they sang to each other in love, in marriage, in cooperation. This is where the vows were renewed. This is where Lemurians fell in love. And now you know the rest of the story. This is why we waited. Emotional it is. Touch the dirt of the island. This one, the last one. Feel it. Majestic it is. Tomorrow you will cruise around it. You look at the coast. Imagine the whole mountain. With all the water running upon it. And there'll be some of you who will weep in joy because you can feel the love and some of you will remember the unions that you participated in right here. It's 2006. And here you are, Lighthouse. You know the lineage of time. My partner has given it to you. We ask you, who are you? And my partner was, was, was asked to give this message yet again. You find yourself in this modern time, the end of time. Historians will say this was a marker where civilization had to decide what it would do next coming toward that renaissance of 2012 and how they would manifest something that the planet had never really truly seen for any length of time a peaceful coexistence oh there'll be disagreements cultures cannot absorb one another there'll be those who want this and others who want that which will all trade with each other and you will not war with each other and you will not hate one another oh there'll be pockets that will flare up there always are of those with free choice that will make a difference but let me tell you where you're headed this potential of peace on earth is clearly within the cosmos and the and the quantum hologram that means it is in the consciousness of those here <coughs> you hold the potential of future all of you you call yourself a lighthouse and we have told you before that you actually have an energy listen to this entourage is here entourage is ready they're gonna to touch you this is important that you hear this there is a cosmic light that you send out as you walk around because you have called yourselves enlightened you can't go backwards you know the truth and you've chosen to send your light and that's what you're here for you're a convention of light workers a meeting that has channeling and esoteric presentations you have made your mark and the universe knows who you are and there you stand in various degrees of light what are you going to do with that let me give you a concept I have not shared with and I want to share this I want you to get this so completely this light of yours is divine it emanates from layer six and it is bright beyond belief huge it is you cannot imagine this cosmic light that you have that's able to heal to send information and light to places that are in the dark so they'll have free choice to see things they wouldn't otherwise see. And there you are sending it. Ah, but now I'm going to reveal something else. The human duality is a filter on the light. How can you possibly send out divine white light unless you are divine? It is an 18 year teaching of Cryon that says, claim the divinity within. What have you got that's the filter? For whatever it is, your light has to shine through it. Human being, what have you got going on today? It may be obscuring the beauty of the divinity 
of that light that is white. What's going on at work? Does that cloud the light at all? In your personal life, you got anything in the way that might taint the light a little bit? Are you worried about something? You know the worry, that clouds it right up. You got part of a light, not a whole light. Did you know that the light worker who is worried about something, when they sit down to send this precious light, sends the worry everywhere? <laughs> Did you know that? That's how powerful you are. What's your filter look like? What is it that you're broadcasting? Do you have an issue that is so profound in your life that it comes back over and over? Are you impatient? And you're broadcasting impatience. Here's my white divine light. Don't you love it? I'm impatient. I'm impatient. I'm impatient. I'm impatient. I'm impatient. Humans are impatient by nature. It is something all of you have worked on and are continuing to work on. It is part of the duality that you must solve. How many of you have issues of judgment? That when you see situations, circumstances, people, you will decide right there and then, correct, not correct. It's a filter. How many of you have an issue which is so strong in your life you cannot release it? You're like the culture of the Jews and the Palestinians. You'll never forget the history. No matter what happens, you'll always quote the history. Are you like that? Have you got history in your life that, that, that makes the filter cloudy? And when you go to send that light that is so precious and so beautiful, you broadcast your history. Here's my history. Here's my history. Here's my history. When are you going to get beyond that? When are you going to put that away? Oh, you're so precious. And it's time to clean the light. I speak to light workers because that's who's here. Oh, in the kinds of meetings, I know who you are. In the kinds of meetings where we meet one time, there'll be, oh, a portion light workers, a portion of those who have just come to, to watch the freak show, <laughs> and others who don't really know why they're there. I know that, but not here. I'm talking to light workers. Oh, it's time to clean the light. Can you take this message and see the profound, precious love in which it is offered to you? I want to introduce you to a real light worker. And I'm going to give her a name, and her name is Mary. And I've introduced you to Mary before. I introduced you to Mary in the channeling called The Journey Home. I want you to meet Mary. This is, this is a light worker. It could be a man. If it would, if it would be a man, it'd be it'd be woe. It was not a man or a woman, but a woe man. We've used woe before. Make it whatever gender you want. I'm going to say it's Mary today. I want you to look at Mary with me for a minute, because she has ascended. Oh, she's still here on earth. The definition of ascension is the death to the to the duality self. Where you bring in the divine self and it governs everything. Governs everything. You say, Whoa, crying, that's the description of the masters of the planet. And I'll tell you this, you're absolutely right. Masters. You're in training for this, and that's why they came, to show it to you, A, B, C. You got it yet? This was not an unexpected energy, light worker, and you're here to work it. Mary, what do you see with Mary? Well, number one, she is balanced. 
Mary's balanced. If Mary has troubles, you'd never know it. Mary's balanced. She knows where they go. See, Mary walks in the world too. She pays the rent too. Mary has a relationship. She has issues. And she's balanced. All governed by the divinity. She is so balanced, people want to be with her. Boy, I want to be with Mary, they say. I don't know what it is. I, when I'm with Mary, she listens to me. She's delightful to be with. She never, she never makes me feel like I'm wrong. I know I am sometimes, but just sitting with her makes me feel good. She never really gives me advice. She just loves me. Oh, I want to be with Mary. That is the attribute of a balanced light worker. Mary is intuitive. She knows when to speak and not to speak. And she gets that from the governor. The governor is layer six, the higher self. Intuitive she is. She's got intuition beyond the normal. She can look at a person and know, know when not to say something or when to say something. Mary does not unload on anyone. She doesn't have to. Because she's walking the path. And she's got her comfort within. So easy to be with. Mary is intuitive. She knows when somebody's lying to her. She knows when to excuse herself because the energy of the room is not appropriate for her magnificence. Do you getting this? It's not ego that Mary has. She knows when to excuse herself. When the situation around her does not suit her magnificence, that's not ego. That's a reality. You got something going on in your life that doesn't suit your magnificence. Maybe it's time to work it out. Because if you've got something going on, every time you send that light, it's going to broadcast that over and over and over and over. That's what it sends to the ethers. That's what it says to the, the crystalline grid of the planet. It records on your Akash. Free will. Oh, it's such dynamic energy. You can change yourself. You can dig into your own Akash, as, as my partner was telling you. You can begin to love yourself in a way you never have before. When you look in the mirror, you can say, I'm an appropriate human being on the planet. I'm pleased to be here. How do you wake up? Happy or sad? <laughs> yes, you do. I know you. Yes, you do. No matter what. Because the first thing you see is the magnificence of the God self. That is a pleasing thing. And whatever else is there, you're going to deal with it later. You don't wake up and worry. You don't wake up and be sad. You'll deal with those things. Those are human. Those are duality. An ascended being puts those away where they belong, where they can be dealt with, in the pockets, in the drawers. Mary knows what to do with duality and darkness. A long time ago, she found out where fear was supposed to work and reside. It's not part of her psyche. It's not even part of her brain. She sees fear as something that takes place within the gut. She can control that because that's not even her thinking process. She knows about that. When she feels something fearful because she's frightened or surprised, she knows where that feeling starts. It's not in her mind. It's not in the God self. It's in the gut. Mary knows what to do with that. She immediately takes care of it. Her biology cooperates. That's layer 10. Did you know that? Within your DNA is all the tools and all the engines for all of these things. You wake up fearful. You wake up unhappy. You wake up worried. Light worker, that's what you're going to broadcast all day long. We gave you a channel the other day. It says, is it well with your soul? 
Well, it is with Mary. And I'm giving you her example because she is you, if you want it. If you want it. Mary attunes herself to the energy of the situation. Do you do that? Do you blast through anything or do you put your feelers out and come at it in love? Can you take situations that others would blast through and make untenable and instead Mary, well, she can step right in the middle of two fighting people and they'll just stop because Mary, oh, she knows what to do. She attunes to the situation. How intuitive are you? Can you tell what's really going on? Or can you see a piece of it and you made up your mind from the piece? All humans do that. All of you do that. And you got to learn to see the big picture. And what is that big picture? And with this all close? The big picture is a family called God. And you're part of it. Hard to explain it is, how God can be so complete, so variable, an energy that depends on the peace called I. <laughs> Master Curiel, he led you on the exercise, who is I and that is you message of crying for 18 years get ready to send a pure light wherever you walk who am I you say I'll tell you who you are this entourage is ready to place their hands upon you I'll tell you who you are you're the hope of the earth that's who you are you can walk from this place and the ones at work are going to see you differently and you'll know when to excuse yourself because it doesn't fit your magnificence. You know who I'm talking to, don't you? You don't have to offend anybody in the process because they're going to see integrity in your life as you walk from here to there. You may have wants, you may have desires, you may have passions, but they'll all be governed by layer six, the I am. The sacredness of who you are and the purity of your light, that's who you are. Some of you have come with requests for healing. I know who's here. Why don't we let it start now? That's why the entourage is here. That's why they're touching you. It started days ago. We've been doing it ever since. It's a meeting of purity. I'll tell you the path to your healing is to make your light so white those filters go away. That's what Mary did. Mary's ordinary. Ordinary human being with master qualities. And she's not an author and she's not a teacher and she's not a preacher. She's a mother who loves God. And she's the hope of the world. That's who she is and that's who you are if you want to be. Time to clean the lens of the light, I would say. Every single human in here, even my partner, needs to clean his lens. It's time to make the white light really white. I give these things to you in love. And the entourage is going to stay. They're going to stay. They'll be in here the next time you meet. And the next time you meet, you think, well, it's just going to be a, a musical concert. Maybe I'll, I'll go do something else. That's free choice. The interdimensional energy of the music that will be presented here is going to cooperate with this message in a profound way. And don't be surprised when that's when the healing will occur that you came for. 
I'll come back and channel some more to you then. Do you recognize me yet? I'm Cryon. I'm the one that's the energy you said goodbye to when you came on the earth. I'm the first one to see you when you come back. I'm Cryon. And I'm in love with you. I ah, sit on the sacred place of marriage. Appropriate is Tom and Linda go through the service they did. Appropriate it is on the top of the Lemurian Mountain yet again. <laughs> and so it is. Let's take this energy. You may envision it as a ball of golden light coming from your heart. All the love in this room, let it flow through you and bring it into the heart. Bring it as a golden ball. And let's just send that energy out through this ship, knowing that it is not an accident that we are all on this vessel together, not just those of us in this room, but all, all the people that are here asking for healing. Take this love that we are filled, we are overflowing with, and send it out to everybody on this vessel. And then let it reach out into the waters and move through the waters, sending love out to the entire planet. And breathe into that, breathe into that intention as you send that out. Feel it moving from this room through the ship and out into the waters and out around the planet. Hold that as your truth. Know it is so. Know it is affecting everything and everyone at the highest octave, the highest level of pure and see the children smiling all over the planet. All over the planet. Look into their eyes. Fill their hearts with love until you see them smiling. And let them know that we are here to support their work. We are here, they are not alone, and we are grateful for them. And so it is. <laughs>